We call our show From the Ground Up, and it'll be a performance with facility staff. So with the custodial staff, the grounds, the maintenance crews, the construction crew. There's just so much love and care that goes into the work of maintaining this campus. And I've really just begun to learn that by getting to know the facility staff here. When we were first introduced to the project, I was a little nervous about it. Is that something that we want to do? Or more importantly, would the staff engage in it? Oftentimes, people are skeptical when they first say yes. So, Will, you know what we're doing here? What do you know? We ain't dancing. <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah, you see? I don't dance, I don't sing. I'm too old to flip, so. Yeah. You can't do no flip. Y es un poco. Da como nervios, pero he escuchado mucho de mis compañeros que no quieren salir por lo mismo, por los nervios, pero pienso que. But as we started to work with Allison and her team and with the iPlace folks, it became apparent that this was a huge opportunity for everybody involved. One, for people to learn about us, and two, for us to express our work in a different form of media. So this is a one-in-a-lifetime opportunity that we're totally engaged in. There's a lot of stuff in the ground. Cable, steam, chill water, everything is underground. People don't realize that our crew is on call 24-7. Anytime, you know, when Wake Forest calls you, we here. We've got these utilities in place, but when you've got grass, brick, and rock sitting on top of them, you got to know where they're at. And Matt's there before anybody else is there. He locates the wire in the ground. campus without walking on some type of utility. Everybody's walking on something. You're walking on power. We gotta find some more drivers, but hopefully some of the forestry, can forestry crew can ride a mower, right? You got the whole crew too. Yes, yeah, so the whole crew yeah. can do some too. Okay, yeah, all right. Yeah. Like just outside the trees, a little bit more center, that middle spot outside the trees, off, and then make a pass where you just ride.
staff um, that didn't want to engage are now wanting to engage. Um, and I think that was part of the shadowing when Forklift was here on campus and working with people and asking them personal questions. You know, what do you like to do on the side? What do you do after work? I think that has drawn people to, to come to be part of this production. I'm born in Mexico, and I raised most of my life in California, and I moved on 2000 to North Carolina with my family. So basically I got almost 20 years since right here in North Carolina, and with these 18 years and working way for it. I've worked here in December, it will be 31 years. I'm on my 37th year. I've been here for nine and a half years now. I'm, this is my ninth year. And my experience and expertise is, uh, comes in valuable sometimes. And going through all these rehearsals that are gonna be coming up, uh, dress rehearsals, and how does one become uh, connected with the group, but how can I bring my family to this as well? How can I showcase to my family what I do?
I'm really hoping that the football team wins their football game because we're hoping that the quad this one time will actually get rolled and we can have it will be able to show what a waste of time it is for us to pick up. We put hours and hours and hours into picking up this toilet paper. And it's not just the horticulture, the whole entire landscape services comes up here. And it just ends up looking just so raggedy and just, it looks unkept and it makes us look like we're not really doing our job. Rolling trees and toilet paper. It affects our schedule and I think it sets the wrong tone for the beginning of the week to go up there and pick up all that toilet paper. I heard it described once as we're covering the trees with the dead skins of the brothers and sisters. That's the perfect way to put it. We're taking trees that were cut down and processed and throwing them on living trees. It's a big waste. And there's no telling how the living trees feel about being covered in toilet paper. I mean, it's taken away from our main purpose of caring for the trees. Our job is to make their life as good as it can be. Uh, at the bottom of this ground plan, you'll see there's bleachers and then there's a couple of squares that are towers. This picture, which was in that packet, is basically what that's going to look like, except without these uh, little sort of uh, roof shade things. And how tall are those? These are 20 feet tall. But then basically this setup is the same bleachers that we're going to be using, and then we're asking for two of these towers. And that just lets us light, get good light on all that front. Faculty musicians will be paid by iPlace. We're working on that. And then our audio engineer and sound op. Jay was going to provide the other major crew um, from his staff. He's saving somehow time and budget, time and money to yep. help us. Yep. And then lighting and then lighting equipment, audio equipment, which Stephen has a list of. So that's kind of waiting on our production manager role to keep move that forward. <clears throat> Thank you for John for putting me on this. It's going to be fun. I also thank for letting students actually see what our guys do day in and day out because they really don't realize when they tear stuff up how hard it is to make it back like it was. So I think you'll open some eyes. So we wanted to just share with you some of our initial thoughts on um, choreography and the project. So you can kind of glance at the ground plan if you'd like um, as we talk about this. But um, I think one of the things that is, is a challenge for us, and we just, um, we're working on it. We have a lot of people, a lot of minds working on it. The experts are working on it, all the staff. But how do we take a lot of the work that happens inside and bring it outside? And at Locksmiths, already have a great idea <laughs> that uh, Mark and uh, David and Sloan and Coco back mm -hmm. have, are they're all in on. Of, uh, they're like, we're going to build a door frame and then we're going to put a lock in and then we're going to have a table there so somebody can put the pole <coughs> on the cylinder and then wow. we're going to, and then we're going to, and then we're going to install the arm on top of the door and then we're going to all walk through the door and check the lock. <laughs> <laughs>
The frustrating thing is to open up bag after bag and see that it's contaminated. I'm passionate about my job and getting it done and getting it done right. Everything I do, I do from the bottom of my heart. And I do it with strength, I do it with love, and I do it with conviction. And that's me. Then there's also the idea of uh, kind of constructing some scenes for the teams to work on um, where, uh, you know, a trailer might come <coughs> through this, this walkway here and maybe have some HVAC equipment on it or maybe a doorway and a door gets installed or something like that. So we're, I think we're brainstorming, talked with Mike yesterday and I think by the end of this week, Mike, want to have some answers for you as to what kind of construction might need to happen. We're used to making an impact, but personally, we are kind of like invisible. This whole project is about who's behind the scenes that we don't see. Pero como siempre al al servicio de limpieza siempre no lo toman mucho en cuenta, yo no como que es lo menos. Entonces me siento muy feliz de formar parte de de este proyecto. We do a lot of uh, the mechanical rooms, uh, a lot of the heating and air conditioning, the plumbing hanging of bulletin boards, uh, fixing walls that they knock holes in. Facilities is, are the doers. They're the ones that are behind the scenes. When you walk into a room and you flip the light switch, it's often the facilities people that make sure that power is delivered to that light switch. If you're you know, the groundskeeper at a university, the focus is on the students, not on you. So these uh, are many of the people involved are used to being invisible and that that feeling of being visible and being appreciated and recognized for what you're doing is what you hope people take away and I think what the participants most often want. We're often put away in the dark part of the closet and say, okay, you can come out every once in a while to, you know, participate. And that's not a good thing. You know, people, the people in this organization are really nice people.
what we do for a living, you see as nonchalant and passive, faceless men. But when we go home at 4.30, we're still somebody's dad. We're doing three hours of homework at night, just like you guys. I got 14-year-old kid who's got algebra issues. We all have that. That's the gist of, of, of what we're trying to show here. We're not just maintenance men. We're not just carpenters. We're not just, you know, lawnmowers. We're guys that, you know, do homework at night. We sing in the church on Wednesday and Sunday. We fish on the weekends. We ride Harley in the evenings. We're still real people. A good carpenter is patient, takes pride in his work. A good carpenter needs to be creative. We can take a suggestion from somebody and turn it into a finished product. Don't go against the grain when you're routing. Don't nail too close to the end of the board without drilling pilot holes because it will split the wood. Softer wood like pine and cedar can be easier to work with. You have to be more careful with harder woods like oak or maple. Boards with knots in them will tend to bow once you pass it through the table saw. You gotta be a bit slower and deliberate. Try to do things right the first time. To be more accurate, we like to measure twice and just cut once. We set up 13,000 chairs on the quad for commencement. It takes us two and a half days to set the chairs up. We start on Wednesday unloading them, and by Friday evening, we're done. All the work that we do at facilities is to get the student to graduate and walk across this field. We help prepare them to go off into the world. And then Allison has asked me to be a part of a singing group. So uh, we have uh, rehearsed a uh, song and uh, hopefully it'll come off well and we'll be on tune. <laughs> oh, I've uh, sang in a church choir nearly all my life and uh, I probably sang something else back when I was in the junior choir, but uh, <laughs> since my voice has changed, I sing bass now, so. Hopefully we can harmonize and, uh, and uh, do a respectable job.
right to where it's at. And that's when I guess a lot of stuff happens. No, I had one incident where I was called in because the kid put the room on fire almost. And they didn't know how to use the fire extinguisher. <laughs> so they sprayed not only the stove, but half of the furniture in the living room. Common sense should have told you that plastic and an oven do not go together. Maybe they were just, they were just hungry you know, and was not thinking. <laughs> we are the rapid response team. Our job is to clean up anything from glass, human feces, dog feces, vomit, blood. You don't know when you're gonna get a call. Floor crew consists of Mac Murray, Ron, Willie, myself, Kevin, and Horace. And that's our floor crew at the University of Wake Forest. What I would like to see uh, as a key takeaway from this project is that people understand how devoted and how special the facilities people are. It seems like everything just magically happens, and it doesn't. There's a lot of work and a lot of effort that goes behind the, the plumbing of buildings, taking care of the maintenance, you know, the all of the aspects that we put into taking care of the grounds. I put my 100% on my job, that when the students or parents, people come and see campus, they, they enjoy what they see. I take a lot of pride in, I can go in each building and, and point out what I've done in this building, and, and uh, I take a lot of pride in that and seeing my work. Lo que me gusta aquí de West Forest que a pesar de que yo no sé mucho el idioma inglés, ellos no vieron como que tanto mi lado de de hablar, sino mi desempeño en el trabajo que es lo más importante. Ellos vieron esa parte de mí. They they want to do the best. They understand what it's like to come in early in the morning, put a hard day's work in, and see the smiling faces that walk around campus and they are an enormously creative group of people. I mean, landscape people, people who fix things, people who make things. There, there's a whole group of people who do nothing but, but make things to solve problems at the university, and some of them are gorgeous. Um, but the people who plant the beautiful flowers, the people who trim the trees, the people who, I mean, this place looks the way it does because of those creative people. Maybe not exactly what we do, but that guy that runs in there and turns that fire alarm, off or on or you have a leak underneath your sink, he's there as your support. That's why you're here. That's why it's Wake family. We're a family here. You know, it don't matter if you're uh, the president of the university or you're one of the custodial staff. Everybody knows everybody and everybody talks and speaks to you. So it's a big, still a big family environment. And that means a lot this day and time.
I was on a cloud so high, uh, I think I discovered new parts of the atmosphere. Tonight was incredible. Exhilarating, exhausting, uh, all of that wrapped up, just heartfelt. It, is, it was a wonderful, wonderful experience. I'm uh, exuberant. I think it went great. Uh, I've been there, like, like I said, 30 years, and this is one of the most neatest things that uh, we've done. I'm relieved that it's over and it went well, but I'm gonna miss the everything going on. Yeah, happy that it's over, but sad that that, uh, that we're not able to do it anymore. I'm kind of depressed. I kind of enjoyed it. <laughs> I think the student and the general population now realizes that we're more than just, just beings, we're people. I didn't really realize there were so many people, like how many people it took to keep campus running. I just want to be more like conscious of that, kind of just everywhere I am, and how many people there are behind the scenes that you don't necessarily see whose work is important. It brings everyone together. I think it's going to bring the community, well, as far as the Wake Forest community, I think they're going to see us more. I think they're going to see us. I'm, I'm really excited to, to go into the rest of this year, knowing all these incredible people from facilities and, you know, just being able to, you know, maybe talk to them on my way to class. I don't know, there were just little little moments where I felt like things landed in these beautiful ways and, and that maybe we'll be able to see each other on campus and and see each other on campus, <laughs> and that'll be cool. Everyone here, they all are here to help us, and in return, we can just have a conversation with them, show them that we appreciate them, and we know them as people. I, I feel like I hope this is the start of something that might be a culture shift, or at least a, an opportunity for deeper relationship, and then, who knows, like it's not in my hands anymore, it's up to this community, but I hope it's the beginning. All I can say is this has been one of the most meaningful Wake Forest experiences, but also one of the more meaningful arts experiences of my life. I mean, it's time to buy a tour bus and let's go on the road. <laughs>